Hi, I'm Steve Andrianis from Hercules Candy Company. I've been making candy for almost 50 years and I want to show you how you can make candy at home. Usually we make these candies at a larger scale on a six to eight foot tables, but if you just do it at home for your family, you can just use baking trays. This is how we make potato chip bark. This is potato chips, and these are some pretzels along with potato chips. And if you follow the procedure that I'm going to show you, you will be the uh, most popular family <laughs> member ever. You can do this with all your uh, items that you have in your house probably. The idea with chocolate is to have a double boiler. This would be ideal if you have one. And if you don't, we can just do a makeshift one, put some water in the bottom of a pan and another pan that fits on top, like that. And we'll turn the heat on. I put it on uh, a, little, a little over medium, kind of high. Get, it, get the water nice and hot. And then we'll put chocolate in there. As Soon as it's melted down, I, I'll show you about halfway or so after stirring it. Then you can turn it off because all that water is still gonna be really hot and it's still gonna be uh, warm enough to melt the rest of it because you don't wanna get it too hot. Mm -hmm. So we'll show you that. Okay, this is just chunk chocolate from uh, our shop. But you can get it in the, you can, if you can't get our chocolate, you can buy chocolate in the stores uh, wherever you live. I'm sure you can find chocolate. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so we'll just pour this in here now. Mm -hmm. And it obviously would be even better if you have um, like a Pyrex dish or something that like perfectly fits this. But we're like, you know what? Not yeah. everyone's going to have that. So let's show the least ideal situation <laughs> so that you can still do it. Yeah, I mean, this will this will work. Yeah. This is something you can do at home. You might have to dump out just a little bit of water. So how do you know how much water is a good Well, amount? you can feel this is touching the bottom now. And it's okay. fine, and the water isn't coming over the top. Oh, so you're worried about it so, overflowing. Yeah, so you don't want to have you know, push the push the bowl down and water come flying yeah. over the top. So. It could be hazardous. Yeah, so now it's melting. It's starting to melt. Just got to keep stirring it though. You don't want it to sit there. Just stir it nice and slow. Yeah, we've had um, viewers from Australia and UK and stuff making chocolate just like how we do. Right? <coughs> really? Yeah, you were just <laughs> you were telling me about yeah. today about like the the UK family. Oh, you know uh, that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't catching what you were yeah. saying. Yeah. Yep, the UK family, the uh, little kids were they were making bark on the counter. Yeah. And uh, the little girl had big gloves on, and she was just <laughs> smacking the chocolate and having a good old time. So once this is about halfway melted, we'll just turn the flame right off. So that's a mistake that you think that a lot of people might make, is thinking they have to keep going until it's all melted. Yeah, because it, believe it or not, it's going to be, it's going to stay hot for quite a while. So you don't want to overcook the chocolate and then, then it will be grainy. Mm. So you don't want to do that. You just want to melt it gently. Chocolate, you got to be gentle. Okay, it's just about, see, you can see it now. It's just about all melted. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take and turn this off. Well, the remaining heat of the hot water will, all this will melt. It's better to be safe than ruin all that chocolate. Mm -hmm. You don't want to burn it. Mm -hmm. Oh, over mm -hmm. the edge. Some still came out. Oh. <laughs> it's just about all melted now. That only took about a, a minute. Yeah, and that was like, it's, like a half a pound or I think it was like one pound of chocolate it's just on yeah just under a pound or so I mean you don't have to have a lot unless you're gonna make a big a bunch for a party or something yeah maybe. I mean I don't know you'll 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 just have to make a judgment call when you make it yeah but you can experiment first now it's all melted now so I got the heat off let's see how hot it is let's see 100 and, whoa, 143, so let's cool this down. Move a little bit of chocolate, see? I should have turned it off earlier. Okay. That's too hot. Yeah. But. Hey, this is actually a first for you doing it like this, yeah, right? Yeah, actually I've never really done it like this, but I figure this will work. Yeah, it's but just like uh, the same mechanism. 
yeah. the home stuff. Yeah, this chocolate's melting right down now. Oh wow, yeah, so it really was really hot then. Yeah. It melted those big chunks. So it, it is important that when you're halfway done to turn the heat right off. Or apparently even a little earlier than yeah. that. You could probably yeah, because it. it'll still kill. As long as you're stirring it, yeah. you can't leave it without stirring it. It could burn on the bottom, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, those chunks have melted right <sighs> down quick. I'm gonna check that. Yeah, yeah let's, let's see temperature again. again. And it says. It's a 142. I wonder if it's like yeah. getting the. Huh. Maybe the bowl is just a hot. Should we take it out of the double boiler? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, let's take it out. Let's set it on top here. Yeah, that way we'll get it cooled down. So this will work, even though ideally you should go to like 112 and then let the temperature cool off. But this is way over. 112 but it'll still be okay it won't it's not ruined yeah so I'm, I'm sure that if people do this at home they might run into the same problem and yeah <laughs> i mean we'll put a little more in bring it down some more yeah when you do this make sure you always have an equal amount of uh chunk chocolate to add after you've melted down your chocolate mm. just in case you run into the same problem of being too hot yeah and then if you have really big chunks uh you can even use like a cheese grater or something right yeah yeah that's all yeah one of these uh one of these let's just use this and uh there'll be little tiny particles and uh that'll melt real quick because you guys use something similar <coughs> at the shop right like with the enrober Oh yeah, we do. We uh, actually we have a little uh, little grinder, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> that works great. You can see those big chunks are just about gone again. Mm -hmm. Let's try it out. 128. It's getting down. Gotta keep going. And put a few more chunks in. <coughs> oh. <laughs> Not too much now? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> but everybody can see now what I mean when I say stop halfway through because it keeps yeah. melting it. It does melt it right down. Cause you don't want to overheat it like uh, like I did. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, Scott said that he was trying to make like bark at home, right? And he said that yeah. his family just kept saying, "Oh, it's fine." Like even when it was hot, and he just used it, and it was not fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can eat it. It's, yeah. it's fine, but it we'll have the cocoa butter rises to the top. Yeah, as long as you don't mind that. Yeah. You know, no, I, I just know that his family is rushing him. They're like, "No, oh, it's yeah. fine." They're like, "Ah, just do it." And he was yeah. like, "No, guys, we have to wait." And then he rushed. Yeah. against his better judgment and then it didn't turn out so hot <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah chocolate is touchy you gotta yeah. you gotta wait you gotta be patient yeah it's patience is key yep that's what you gotta do so in the meantime while we're doing this now why don't we get uh, the parchment paper and uh, the trays oh yeah let's get all that ready let's get that whoa don't try this at home i'm a professional <laughs> All right, those are ready. So we're going to have some potato chips and we'll have some pretzels. We'll see how that works. And the temperature now, 109. Oh, okay. It's getting there. It's, it's cooling down. To our fellow entrepreneurs out there, what if I told you that there was an equivalent of a laundry machine for your e-commerce website? Wouldn't it be nice if some of your most tedious, time-consuming tasks could be automated? Well, then look no further than ShipStation. With the automation of printing shipping labels, accurately filling in text fields, and automatically sending out shipping notifications, you can save hours of your time, which you can then use to spend on less automatable tasks like coming up with new candies or arguing with your husband about who really came up with a new candy idea that you came up with, but he's convinced that he did because he dreamt about it with no input from you. But anyways, 
Not only does ShipStation offer up a ton of automation and saved time, it's incredibly easy and fast to set up. And it integrates seamlessly with anywhere that you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You can manage every single order from one simple dashboard and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. On top of all that, ShipStation is offering you all a 60-day free trial when you click on the link in our description or go to ShipStation.com slash Hercules. That's ShipStation.com slash Hercules. And thank you ShipStation for sponsoring this video. Okay, here we go. It's all melted and it's about uh, 82 degrees, which you can do it above 80 uh, for um, like 82 to 85 degrees to cover potato chips or pretzels or something like that or making bark. But if you're just doing a mold, if you're pouring and pour this into a mold, it's got to be 80 degrees. Hmm. But you can get away with it a little bit higher like we're going to. It's 82. Mm -hmm. And we'll try some pretzels. Let's try this method. We'll throw a little bit in here. And then we'll stir it up and see if we can... Do it this way. Cause I've never done it this way. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of experimenting for us too. Yeah. This is. Yeah, it seems like a kind of easier way to do it, as far as like not having to put gloves on and get your hands dirty. There we go. So we're definitely gonna get a lot of chocolate on there. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you can tap it on the edge of the bowl. Okay. Hold on. Let's use the technology we have available. Yeah, two forks. So, yeah. Wow, look at that. Well, te use two fork technology, huh? Technology is something, isn't it? <laughs> I guess you'll have to figure out your own little method. Yeah. <laughs> Trial and error. But, uh, hey, I'm, I'm sure your friends and family will not mind if you uh, mess up and you got to keep practicing. Oh, you know? yeah. Okay. So we did a, a line of uh, pretzels. Now we should do maybe a line of uh, potato chips. Huh? Mm hmm I wonder if... Uh, do you think that method will work or do you think it'll be... This method? Yeah, for the potato chips because they might be a little more breaky. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Let's just take a couple chips. Okay. And we'll. Uh... Chocolate cover them here. I might have to warm the chocolate up a little bit. It's getting kind of cold, I think. 81. That's not too bad. Just like put it back in the double boiler? Yeah, that's all. Yeah, it definitely seems like there's more chocolate on these than if you were to use your hands because it's much easier to just scrape the chocolate off. Yeah, I can off. control the chocolate better with And then if you hands. try to use a fork to get it off, there's still chocolate on the fork. So. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I think it's definitely doable with a fork, but I think it would definitely, even at home, would be easier with uh, gloves because you just have so much more control over your hands. Oh, yeah. I should have brought some gloves and yeah, I got some gloves. Too. You want to use them? Yeah, let's try it. All right. This was just starting to get a little bit too cold. It's starting to get thick. So we took the pan off the sink and just added um, hot water from the sink. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to heat it up. And it warmed up the chocolate just enough. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to go through it all over again. Get it yeah. too, too hot and start all over. Yeah, that took a long time to, just to cool down. And yeah, I mean... So one thing I noticed too is like it seemed like it was cooling down very quickly in the beginning and then the cooler it got, the slower it cooled down. Now I could do this without the gloves, but I don't want to get all the chocolate on my hands. Yeah. So I'm going <laughs> yeah, to use the gloves. Yeah, if you do this at home and just your friends and family, yeah. they don't care, do yeah. it with just your hands. I'm sure little kids would love that. Like, oh, yeah. Wait, mom, you're telling me I can just put my hands put in my chocolate hands in and there? I won't get in trouble? Yeah. Okay, so we'll take a couple chips and we'll uh, put them in here. Just dunk them in here. Mm -hmm. Tap it on the side. <laughs> oh, that's all it right. broke. We'll set them down. 
you can do this too. Is put a little chalk on it and then swirl around on your hand. That's even better. Yeah, that's the, I know the technique that I'm familiar with from the shop. So let's show so, that again. So we'll take this, dunk it in, and then now we can take it and swirl around on your fingers. So it's mostly like the thumb and yeah. the thumb that's really so doing it. Then you can so this difference there and then where this is with the fork it's really it depends on if you want them real thick you can do yeah, them that if way. you like yeah. more chocolate to potato chip ratio yeah. then perfect yeah. you can do that <laughs> but uh but yeah if you want more of a potato chip um because it might be a little overpowering you might not even really get much of the potato chip if you do too much so it just it depends what you're you like and i'm sure you're like i said your friends and family they won't mind yeah. if you practice all the time <laughs> nope <laughs> And you can get away with, uh, like I said before, this is a little bit warmer than you would use for molds. If you were going to do molds, you'd have to have it at 80 degrees. This is 86, and it's still going to be okay for doing potato chips or pretzels or nut clusters. Just because these are room temperatures, so it'll cool down the chocolate. Yeah, just that it changes yeah. everything. It's like when you guys um, add nuts to the brittle later on instead of like when you're cooking them like you have to get it to a higher temperature because the nuts will actually cool it down yep that's true you paid attention huh yeah after all these years i finally learned something wow boy, of all time because <laughs> that that uh, <laughs> degree from hercules candy university is finally paying off <laughs> yeah we'll see that now that's uh just take it and and when you've got your chip i want to show you a little trick got your chip here okay you dunk it in and then turn your swirl it around on your hand okay and now you can rub the outside of your hand on the bowl so now when you go from here to the tray you won't be dripping it um, all over the place yeah because you're just let's see yeah because you're just um stopping the drips mm -hmm. Unless, you know, you don't mind it dripping everywhere. You know. Maybe maybe you've got kids and they'll, they'll clean yeah, they'll, it up. Yeah, they'll clean it right up. Yeah, yeah. So that's well, okay, too. Yeah, they're like dogs that can eat chocolate. Yeah, that's... A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can really see um, how much cleaner it got on the tray once you start using your hands versus yeah. the fork. Yeah, yeah. That's the way to go, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, either doing it with either bare hand if you're fine with it or gloves on. Right, yeah, either way. I mean, if, especially if you're just making it for yourself. Right. What do you care? Yeah, you're going to be picking it up with your hands. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, this is the way I learned how to make candy is uh, with no gloves. Yeah, back in the day. Back, yeah, back you, in the 70s. You guys only had to start wearing gloves in like what, the 80s or something? In the 80s because uh, the restaurants, hepatitis was going around because people were not washing their hands mm. like they should be. So that's how that started, hmm. which was it, was, it was hard at first. But then I got the hang of it using the gloves. Mm -hmm. Was it harder because you had to like feel the chocolate temperature through the gloves? Yeah, yeah. At first it was like, well, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> but you, uh, you figure it out. You adapt. Yep. Now we're going to make some uh, potato chip bark. Because we had some extra chocolate. <laughs> yeah, we have some extra chocolate. We got some time. We just, the temperature's good. We're going to pour these out here. Yeah, a lot of people, when they first make something, though, I think they'll usually do bark just because it's so simple to do. Yeah. It's hard to mess up. We might as well show you how to do that, too. Yeah, that's good. Everybody likes it. Hmm. We'll break them up a little bit. You can just, like, punch them down, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. Are you putting uh, pretzels in there too? That could be fun. I could. Yeah. Because we don't make that on the channel. Might as well make a new bark. Okay, that pretzels. We're probably, honestly, we're probably going to give this to Kara's friends. Pretzels are coming right up. <laughs> pretzels, potato chips. We got any peanuts? Yeah, <laughs> I have. What do I have over here? <laughs> so this is my actual house, if anyone's wondering. I've got some cash actually so these caches i got from the shop i just bought them from my mom and dad <laughs> no this uh. is good this is fine <laughs> so now we'll take and we'll put this over here and we'll pull the bowl out and wipe it off so the reason you're wiping it off is so you don't get the chocolate on the, the pretzels and potato chips i don't want to get the water on them mm -hmm. yeah i don't want the don't water. want this to drip on yeah, the water candy. and chocolate do not mix no it's not good <laughs> Mm. 
This is where if you got kids, you could have them lick the ball when you're done. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to do that, right? Yeah. Even grown-ups. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Mix this up. Pretzels and potato chips. <laughs> it's a party. Does it feel weird doing it on such a small, with such a small amount? Yeah, it's got I forgot you gotta hold the paper down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hold the paper down, otherwise it moves around too much. Yeah. I guess if you were to do this at home, if you could like tape it down yeah, to like the counter. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, if you could tape it down on your, hey, oh yeah, on the counter too. Yeah, yeah that'd be we're, we're learning as we go. Yeah, because <laughs> I never did this before. Yeah, we don't do this at home. But yeah. Or you could tape it in the tray if you want to keep it on the tray. And uh, yeah, if you have it in the tray, then it would definitely be easy to transport. Too. Yeah, yeah. It would be interesting too to see how quickly this cools because it's such a small amount. Yeah, it should cool relatively quick. And then you don't really have to cut it. You can just break it up when you're done. You don't have to cut it like we do. Now you can't stop moving on this until it finally gets cold. Because if you do, the, the cocoa butter will rise to the top. If, you, if I left it right now while it's uh, still soft and shiny, mm -hmm. this would all turn white. Mm. So you got to keep doing this until, keep touching the chocolate the whole time, the outside edges, the middle, everywhere you can. And then once it starts hardening up, then you can just leave it. So then, then it's done. I do have two questions. Sure. One, what is the ideal temperature to pour it at? I'll just start with that one. <clears throat> um, probably 90 because you want to be able to have time to, to um, stretch it all out and cover everything. Gives you more time before it hardens up. And then my next question is what would happen if you poured it too hot and what would happen if you poured it too cold? If you poured it too hot, it would take you a long time to cool this <laughs> down. You'd, take, you'd be doing this for, I don't know how long. Mm -hmm. And if you did it too cold, then it might just harden and clump up on you before you get to, to, uh, to cover everything and, and push it so it fills in mm -hmm. your tray. So, so about so 90? Yeah, 90 degrees probably it's good. Especially if you're doing it at home. You're not going to be doing it like on a big table. I mean, if you were doing like a, filling up this whole counter, yeah. then maybe you might want it to be at least 100. Or if, if you got just, your own walk at, water jacketed table at home. Yeah, <laughs> if you're just doing it like we are here, for maybe a tray or two. Um, this 90 and then you actually you could take a couple papers and put them on the counter just like this and tape them down mm -hmm. then you could make whatever size you want to make yeah you know, especially if you're going to cut them up later anyway and they don't have to be transported on the tray yeah i mean it doesn't matter what what it what shapes they're in or you just break it up and put it in bags and i, I it's going to be good i mm -hmm. mean come on <laughs> Nobody's going to say, oh, that doesn't taste good. <laughs> you can see it's almost dry. So what you want to do is go drag your hand across it. Instead of just going up and down Instead with your hand? Instead of just going up and down, otherwise it looks like grass or a carpet. <laughs> Maybe it's just my preference, but I'd rather have it go sideways. So just a little, just a slight. It just looks better to me. But... You don't. You can do whatever you want. And see, it's cold. You can tell it's cold now. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell just by looking at it. I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. That's. That's it. You do the edges just to make sure, because sometimes the edges can have a little cocoa butter show through if you mm -hmm. don't touch them enough. But uh, that's it. So it's like the texture that you're looking for. Yeah, because you can yeah. kind of see the change of what it was until now. Yeah, and look at uh, these, these over here now. They're nice and dry. Mm -hmm. They look good. Oh, they're nice. Yeah, nice. not bloomed or anything. Yeah. All this looks great. Just like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So if you just follow the, what I showed you, you should be able to do the same thing. 
Good work. But it just takes time. <laughs> yeah. That's all. A lot of patience, yep. especially when it came to cooling down. That was... Yeah, you just got to be patient. Yeah. You can't rush it. Okay, so we just showed you how to make candy at home, but if you feel like that's a little too much work, we also sell candy. Yes. So you can come into our store in East Syracuse, New York. We would love to have you visit or go to our website, HerculesCandy.com and check it out. I gotta get back to work.